Playing complex games has always been my favorite pastime, so today I'm going to help you ease into just one such game and that is why we are going to start from the very beginning. So what can we learn from the prologue of Phoenix Point? Quite a lot in fact. How to track enemies in battle and choose your targets, what are action points and how they are spent, how movement works, which types of cover there are and how to use it, the specifics of basic and free aim attack, how ammunition reloading works, inventory management and the use of vehicles in combat. For those of you who are totally unfamiliar with Phoenix Point, I will do a short overview of the game later in the video. My name is Peter and let's dive in. The first thing to note is that the list of enemies at the bottom of the screen shows both enemies your currently selected soldier can engage and also all the enemies on the map your team can see. Depending on which soldier you have selected, he can only attack enemies whose icons are in red. Grayed out ones represent enemies which are out of his line of sight. The reason why this is important is because you need to stay aware of the fact that you have to look through each soldier's individual line of sight to the enemies before you come up with an action plan for your turn. This is especially true because of how your default camera is the bird's eye view, which can confuse you and make you forget about the individual soldier's point of view which limits which enemies he can shoot at. The second important thing is the action points pool of each soldier. These action points are divided into four separate bars, but each of those can be further divided when it comes to movement. This is additionally complicated by the fact that different actions spend different amounts of these points, and even different weapons spend different amounts. A sniper rifle or an autocannon will spend 3 points, while a shotgun or an assault rifle will spend just 2 for an attack. Additionally, you can move after shooting, so take that into account when planning out your moves. On this subject, it pays to keep an eye on the color of the highlighted movement area and the movement icons. Blue tells you that any movement inside that area will leave your character with enough action points to use his basic weapon attack. An orange icon in area means that after moving to that point, you will no longer have enough action points to use your basic attack of the currently active weapon. I say currently active because you can have more than one weapon on a soldier, but you have to activate it to see how far you can go with it and still take a shot. The reason why I keep saying basic weapon attack is because there are multiple ways you can reduce the action costs of a weapon attack with special abilities, more on this in a follow up video which I will link up here and in the description and during that video I will also talk about jump jets, daze weapon effects, bashing and melee combat, medikits, different soldier classes and weapons, enemy types and tactics, overwatch and many more advanced gameplay stats and mechanics. When it comes to the cover system in Phoenix Point, it works very much like in every other similar game. Low cover offers partial protection, while full cover offers a much higher degree of protection, but only from specific directions and of course only from range attacks. Melee enemies have no problems running up to your soldiers and clawing, biting or bashing them behind cover. Low cover can also be vaulted over, reducing movement distance and also allowing jumps over certain objects and between floors. Free aiming is another advanced feature in this game and it allows you to choose which body part will your soldier target. While the basic attack is always at the torso, the free aim will allow you to manually choose to attack other body parts like the head or the extremities. The main idea here is to place the middle aiming circle on the part you want to attack because 50% of the shots will land in that area. The other 50% will land in the outside circle and this creates a problem if you're too far away from the target because most of these shots won't even hit it. Which is exactly why the base attack is always aimed at the torso because this is usually the largest or central part of any enemy. The thing to keep in mind is that every enemy has different strong and weak body parts. Some enemies are best shot in the arm because that disables their attack, some into the legs to slow them down and others to headshot for maximum damage. A nice trick you can use with the free aim is that when the enemies are stacked close enough to each other you can target one but hit both or more with the shots which go on the outside of the aiming circle, like this. Now back to the basics with another very important note. When you reload a weapon in Phoenix Point, you throw away all the ammunition remaining in that old clip. There is no recycling of old clips in this game. This means you have to think before reloading. Do you want to keep going on the ammo you have, or throw away the ammo to have a full clip available? This adds to tactical thinking and inventory management and I personally love it. Speaking of inventory management, this is something you have to think about both in and outside of battles. Each soldier has the same limited inventory space while his maximum carrying weight is based on his stats, this being mainly strength. You can fill each soldier's inventory to his maximum item capacity 
but if you go over the current weight maximum, then the soldier will have a reduced combat efficiency because of it. There is a lot more I have to explain to you about inventory space and item usage, but I will cover it in one of my next videos about this game, where I will show you base and soldier management. Another subject the Prowl covers is the use of vehicles in combat, specifically ground armored and armed vehicle called a Scarab. It's capable of transporting up to 4 soldiers inside and has a powerful missile launcher for long range artillery support. This weapon has a limited ammo capacity which cannot be reloaded in battle. The area of effect is quite small because it fires only 2 unguided missiles for each attack. They do deal a lot of damage and destroy cover very efficiently, so even if they miss the main target, they will often leave it exposed and out of cover. A cool tip here is that you can also just drive the vehicle straight through soft cover and it will break down allowing your soldiers to take direct shots at the enemies. I do hope that you are enjoying this video and now won't mind helping me out a bit by hitting the like button below, leaving your impressions of the game as a comment and subscribing if you are not already. Next I want to tell you a bit more about Phoenix Point in general. As you might have noticed, this game shares a lot of its core mechanics with Phyrex's XCOM Enemy Unknown from 2012, but what you might have not known is that it was created by the original creator of UFO and XCOM franchises at his company Snapshot Games, meaning that this game is a mix of turn-based quad tactical combat and possible real-time management simulation on a global scale, with mechanics ranging from the Geoscape through soldier RPG progression and tactical combat missions. In Phoenix Point, your game starts quite a bit post-apocalypse, because the alien creatures have attacked the human race from within rather than from without and have all but destroyed them. The remains of humanity are fractured both geographically and ideologically and are separated into townships called havens, each with its own resources, alliances and unique opportunities for the player. You, as the commander of the only force capable of both understanding and properly combating the enemy, have to strike a balance of power which will save not all but as many as possible of the remaining humans. The game is structurally divided between the action-packed combat tactical missions and the global strategic planning layer known as Geoscape. Besides the human soldiers, which you recruit, train and upgrade to an RPG system, complete with cosmetic customization, you also get to manufacture both land and air vehicles. On top of that, you can manufacture your own armor and weapons at the base and collect it on missions as loot. Research projects allow reverse engineering those items and producing your own variants. All of this requires resources which you gain as you explore the world in your aircraft, on specific missions where you find them as loot, directly as research rewards, and you can also trade for them with different factions. As for the soldiers themselves, you have the level progression, a point system of upgrading them as they gain experience, but besides just stats, you also unlock new skills and specializations. Beyond the base specialization, you can add a new one once your soldier is experienced enough and you have accumulated enough points. This creates both versatile and powerful combat specialists for your team, which can be as high as 8 soldiers on a mission and dozens around the world in several bases. There is a large variety of missions, settings, maps and enemies which come in all shapes and sizes, from the very small and fast to the very massive and lumbering. They also have a range of weapons, skills, abilities and powers which take a while to learn and play against. The great thing about this is that the game will keep throwing new stuff against you and you will never stop learning how to defeat those enemies in new and interesting ways. The story is a really well written and crippling one, full of twists and turns and the player gets to write a lot of it for himself as he chooses his own path through it. Depending on those choices the overall campaign will differ quite a lot each time so there is a lot of replayability here. Your choices of soldiers' weapons, armor and skills will similarly affect your experience in tactical gameplay during missions and add to the diversity of new playthroughs. As a fan of the XCOM franchise myself, I have thoroughly enjoyed playing Phoenix Point and I do hope that with a bit of help from my tutorials and guides, you will too. I want to thank you for watching and I wish you all happy gaming.